this is the basic mechanism of steps involved in the treatment of potable water. Before studying the steps involved in potable water, let us see starts with the first step. Before starting, before purifying, before treating the water, we must select the source of water. From where we need to take the water. The source of water are what? Streams or rivers and lakes are the sources of waters. These are the most common sources of water which can be used by our municipalities. These waters should be free from colloidal impurities, domestic sewage, industrial effluents, and disease producing bacteria. Hence, domestic supply of water involves these following purification processes. First one is a screening. How does the screening will occur? We can see here. You can see here we have kept some screens here. Screens are called to be the nets. It is a process of uh, removing floating materials of materials like leaves, wood pieces, etc. from water. Here you can see one net has been kept in the form of a screen. You can see here the airplanes. The airplanes are getting treated out and kept here. Um, this is the uh, screening process. The first preliminary process is called in the screening process. Next, what we'll do? We'll send some gases into it to remove the carbon dioxide and H2S gases from this. Afterwards, what we'll do? Let us see the sedimentation tank, sedimentation coagulants. Before this, we need to do what we need to do. We need to add some a uh, chlorine, lime and alum. We need to mix them. Why we need to mix all these three compounds in this? We need to mix because of we need to kill the microorganisms before starting the process itself. We will be killing some microorganisms present in them by mixing all these components in them. Then what happens? The water will get into the coagulation tank. You can see here the water after mixing all these chemicals, we are sending the water into coagulation tank. What this coagulation tank is, in this method, certain chemicals called coagulants like alum are used. When this alum is added to water, it gets hydrolyzed to form some insoluble gelatinous precipitate. What is that insoluble gelatinous precipitate? That is called to be AL moisturize. Plus aluminium hydroxide. You can see here. You can see the formula here. AlDSO4 tries. This is the alum. When you mix with the water, what happens? We can get some coagulants or precipitates. This AL moisturize is a precipitates or coagulants. Coagulants which can be easily removed from the water. This AL moisturize has been shown here. You can see here. These are the coagulants that must be. Are removed. How those coagulants can be removed? After completing, after having those coagulants, what we do? We send that water into the sedimentation tank. In sedimentation tank, what happens? In this process, removing will be removing suspended impurities. How we can remove the suspended impurities? By allowing the water to stand undisturbed for about two to six hours in a big tank. Most of the suspended particles settle down at the bottom of the tank due to the force of gravity and they are removed. Sedimentation tank removes only 75% of suspended impurities. Okay, next what we will do after completion, after removing the sediments from the water, coagulants from the water, we will send that water into filtration tank. In this process, what happens? In this process, this is the process of removing bacteria, color, taste, odor by passing the water through filter beds containing fine sand, coarse sand, and gravel sand. Let us see what is a filtration tank. How does it could be? This is a filtration tank. You can see here. In this, what happens? The sand filters. These are the. These are all the sand filters. What are the sand filters? Fine sand, what coarse sand, fine gravel, coarse gravel. These are all the four different types of beds. In this, what happens? The first one, the sand filter consists of a 
the stick of a tank containing a thick, clay, thick top layer of fine sand followed by the coarse gravel, fine gravel and coarse gravel. The rate of filtration decreases slowly due to the drawing of impurities in the pores of the sand pit. When the rate of filtration becomes very slow, filtration is stopped and thick top layer of fine sand is scrapped off and replaced with the clay sand. Bacteria are also partially removed by this a process. After the filtration tank, what we do is we will send those water into the disinfection tank. What we will do in the disinfection tank? In the disinfection tank, we will be killing the microorganisms by using some chemical processes. What are those processes? It is a process of destroying harmful bacteria. It is known as disinfection process. The following methods can be used. What are those following methods? First one is by boiling. By boiling the water, we can kill the microorganisms. And the second one is moisturization process. Ozonization process. The third one is chlorination. We will be sending some chloride gas into the water so that we can able to kill the microorganisms present in the water. Chlorides like chloramine, bleaching powder, chlorine gas. These three components will be sending into the water so that we can kill the microorganisms. Next third one by using UV radiation. If we send the UV radiation, we need to clear the UV radiation by an electrical current to a mercury lamp. These, after creating these UV rays, we will be sending them, we will be sterilizing. We will be these UV radiations will be used to sterilize the swimming pool water. Next, the last one is by using bleaching powder, we can able to kill the microorganisms present in the water. These moisturization process, chlorination, these are all the process I will be doing. Explain in, the, in my next video. Okay, after the killing microorganisms present in the water in the disinfection process, the, after that, that water is used and it, it can be stored in a storage tank and it can be distributed to the people. This is the whole process of uh, steps involved in the treatment of potable water. Here you can see sludge, degrees are there, and then activated sludge. You, you can see some. Here you can see the disinfection tank. In the disinfection tank, what you can see chloride will be sending you know, the chlorine gas will be sending you to the microorganisms. Here these process have been classified into primary, secondary and tertiary will be taken three different uh, modes here will be filtering the water. And here you can see the flotation of the sludges. And here this is one type of uh, water you can see here. From the reservoir, water is to be taken that will be sent into the coagulant. Here we will be adding some coagulants so that uh, what are the coagulants which we have seen? Alum is a coagulant. If you all uh, add alum in the water, we will be able to get a coagulant that will be added up with the calcium, magnesium, ions to form a coagulant. Afterwards, we will be sending dirt water into the population tank and that water will be sent into the sludge. In the sludge we have already seen, we will be keeping the water undisturbed for about uh, up to, to 7 hours. Then what happens? All the heavier, uh, heavier molecules will go and settle down at the bottom of the layer. Here you can see sedimentation basin is given here. All the sediments which will be go at the lower level, those will be collected separately and upper level of water will be separated collecting you can see your lower level of water will be used for the other another purposes that will be used for the horticultural purpose